Do you believe these myths? You need a lot of money to make money. It takes years to own free and clear real estate. You must be a professional investor to become wealthy. The only way to earn interest on your individual retirement account is at a bank or savings and loan. This is the man who has shattered all the myths that getting rich is beyond people like you. This is Hal Morris, one of America's most respected financial advisors, authors, and speakers, and star of the popular nationally aired TV program, Money, Money, Money. His widely acclaimed seminars and best-selling books have helped thousands achieve financial freedom. What you learn now about the instant cash system could be the most life-changing hour you've ever had. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Mr. Hal Morris. Of all the seminars that I have ever done, the one that I think can help you more than any of them is one that I did in Hawaii. Today, you're going to experience that seminar and I want you to see that this is not like many of you've seen because we're going to actually take you out and show you how to do it. We're going to take you by the hand and actually go to a foreclosure auction that the IRS held at an IRS sale. We're going to go to a tax auction and we're going to show you step by step, line by line, what you need to do to be successful and put some instant cash in your pocket today. I've got two goals for you. Goal number one is to put some cash in your pocket in the next 90 days. Goal number two is for you to own some free and clear real estate within the next six months. If you'll get a pencil and paper and take careful notes, you'll be able to accomplish both of those goals. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go to Hawaii right now. Now, let's, let's go through the process here, folks, so you'll understand exactly what happens, and that is the IRS may levy and sell any property belonging to any taxpayer who neglects or refuses to pay within 10 days of notice and demand for payment, any tax for which the taxpayer is liable. And it's happening all over the United States. Some of you may have just read about a running back for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Tony Dorsett didn't pay taxes in 79, 82, and 83. What did the IRS come in and do? They put a lien on his properties. Now, in his case, they did not auction the property off for a very good reason. And that is, he held out of camp, renegotiated his contract, and got the money to solve the problem. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go to a clip of showing you how you get the information from the IRS and teach you the steps that you're going to follow. Now, what this is coming from is that we do what we call millionaire boot camps all over the United States. We will come in and put 15 people or less together, and you spend one week with a millionaire. So, And the goal of that week is to go out and actually do transactions, just like some of you. John's not the only one. There are three people in this room that have told me already this weekend since Saturday they have put together transactions. And I want you to see that there's no mystery to it. Usually we stand up here and tell you how to do it. Today you've got the privilege of saying on tape exactly how to do it. So at this time, let's go. Now, let me tell you what you're going to see. You're going to see, first of all, me dialing. You're going to see us dialing the phone. Then you're going to see us at the IRS with the auction taking place. 3104. <laughs> Internal Revenue Service. Yes, uh, may I speak to Dee Carranza, please? I'm sorry, he's not available. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm calling regarding the seal bid sale you're right. going to have tomorrow at 2627 Orchard Avenue. Right. All right, can you tell us what loans are on that property? Sure, okay. The approximate uh, value of the property, our value is between seventy to 80000 No encumbrances, minimum bid, 7000 I just had that figure. I read it off to someone else. $7,685. $7,685. Correct. And um, what else can you tell me as far as the property is concerned? Is it in bad shape? Uh, well, are you familiar with the area at all? No, but just from, uh, just from the price range, I would guess the South Central Los Angeles? Yeah. Do you need uh, I did not make the seizure. My understanding is uh, it does need work to the, uh, you know, to the property or to the house itself. Um, other than that, I really don't know much, what else to tell you because, of course, you know, you, all you could do is drive by and look at it, and that's about the best. Yeah, is this a fixer-upper or a blower-upper? <laughs> uh, more of a blower-upper. 
Is it really? <laughs> okay. Uh, my good friend Pete uses that. Uh... Hey, I, the thing is, either way, uh, you know, for, for since there's no encumbrances, uh, you know, there's no first or second, I would, even at a minimum bid, you're still, even the land value, you're still taking a... Just making a steal. Yeah. Are, are you having a lot of uh, calls on it? A lot of we do. So far, we have I have four four envelopes sitting in the file for sale bids already. I see. So, yeah. uh, well, quite a few people have been calling. A lot of them are waiting right till today or tomorrow because we had two other sales last week. Almost. It may, well, the property were in better conditions, but there were also great deals because there were no encumbrances involved. But those properties were deemed prior to sale. Oh, they were. Right. So this one's gonna for sure it's gonna go to sale, but. Uh, uh, the taxpayer still has 180 days to redeem. Mm -hmm. If you're the successful bidder, and then what would happen is you would get your money, whatever you bid, plus 20 percent. Well, that's a good deal. Yeah. It? So you still make good money. You sure. can't make it any. You won't get 20 percent anywhere else. Right. All right. Let Let me ask you a question, and that is the um, the situation as far as the properties last week. Did they go for dramatically more than the opening bid? One. One did. One, for example, the minimum bid was twelve thousand. Someone went twenty-two thousand. And what would you guess it was worth? Uh, it was also in the South LA area. I would say. I'm trying to remember which property it was. It was somewhere in that area, about between seventy to eighty thousand, also. Okay, so somebody's in a pretty good spot. Yeah. All right. So maybe. Forget this. Even if you take it for. Uh, Fifteen, just the land itself is, I would say, worth forty thousand. Wow! You know, forty or fifty thousand. That's great. Now, do tell me exactly the steps. I'm, you're very nice, and I would like to bring in a bid. Uh, tell me what steps I need well, to follow. Well, all you need to do, because you do know that the sales tomorrow at ten o'clock. We okay. open. We will open all envelopes at ten. So, either you drop it off today or first thing tomorrow morning. Okay. Now, do I have to have a cashier's check? Correct. Or? For twenty percent of the, whatever you're bidding and then full payment within 24 hours. Okay, so if I'm going to bring, let's say I bid $15,001, I would bring you $3,001, for example, in cash? Yeah, 20, well, 20% 20 of that, if, that's, if that comes out to it. Yeah, okay. So I'd bring a cashier's check. Made out, uh, payable to the Internal Revenue Service. And, and where do I bring that? Okay, that, the address is 1625 North Hudson Avenue. And that is in what city? In Hollywood. Here we are, the two gentlemen up front are going to be in charge of holding auction. There I am on the front row. Now he's opening my bid. This is my bid, so listen. Bid number 10, $12,879. All right, now at that point, I think I'm going to get the property, right? Because I got a bid. Now this is a sealed bid sale, meaning it's not an oral auction. Everybody puts it in an envelope, and then they open them one by one. Now, this is the very last one, and they can't believe their eyes. Bid number 11 and the last one. Watch their reaction when they see the number. Now, remember, my bid was over 12000 You see them? They're looking and looking again. $40,180. Again, $40,180. Can you see why they couldn't believe their eyes? Somebody Successful really bidder, wants. number 11, for $40,180. Okay, so uh, did you see the process, how easy it is to get the information? All right. Was it tough to get the information from the IRS? You know, guess when I found out about that sale? Just that morning, and the sale's ready to take place the next day. So what I'd like to do is give you some steps to follow to go out and buy IRS seized property. Okay, step number one is I want you to look up the IRS phone number. That's what you got to do is get their phone number. You just go to the phone book. Number two, you call and ask for an IRS seized property officer. The key word there is a seized property officer, S-E-I-Z-E-D. Then there are several questions that you need to ask the individual from the IRS. You need to ask them, are there any sales scheduled? Do you have any sales scheduled up? Now, in some parts of the country, they will send you notices in the mail. It depends on your area. So 
you can check with them as to whether or not they do have a mailing list and whether or not they will send out information. In some areas, they have discontinued the mailing list. Now, do you think that makes me happy or sad if they've discontinued the mailing list? Glad, that's right. See, because there's less exposure, less people know about it. So what you do is once a month, every 30 days, you just make a phone call and go through this process. Are there any sales scheduled? If so, when are they scheduled for? And then question number four is how much is the opening bid? You saw that's exactly what I did on the tape. Now, the important thing to remember is dumb is smart. Do you know what I mean by that? My friend Jimmy Napier from Chipley, Florida says dumb is smart. You remember how Columbo used to get a lot of information? Remember how he was always fiddling around and he couldn't find anything and all? Pretend, just like I've done on all these tapes you're going to see tonight, you're going to think, I don't know anything about this process where they're giving you help, all right? How, can you help me? Explain to me how this works, what's involved. And so some of you are saying, hey, I don't have to pretend like I'm dumb, right? It's easy for me because I don't understand any of this stuff. Now, how much is the opening bid? Number five, are there any liens recorded prior to yours? Now, the IRS has a lien on that property. In the case of the sale, you just saw the lien was for just over $7,000. Now, are there any liens prior to yours? That's telling you whether or not you have any other loans that are in front of yours. The second one is how many are there and how much money is involved. Number six, what is the approximate market value? Do you remember what they told me the approximate market value on that property was just then? $80,000. And how much was the back taxes? How much was the opening bid? $7,000. Now, folks, do I have to be real smart to know whether or not I'm interested in that property? No. It's easy for us to find out whether or not we're interested in that deal. Now, question number seven, have you had much interest in the property? What we're asking is, are there a lot of people that are calling you up? Now, what you're going to find is this happens to be in an area where I live and where I've taught a lot of students. So there were 12 people out of 7 million that were interested in that property. Okay, so do you all see how simple it can be to pick up the phone and find a bargain? All right. It's not hard for you to find the bargain, and we've got a lot of different techniques for you to put these transactions together. There are lots of different ways you can do it. Now, let's go back to our government foreclosure opportunity list so that you remember number one on our list was IRS. Now, that doesn't mean it's the best opportunity. It just means it's the first one that I've given you. The second government opportunity that we have for you is called the Veterans Administration. The Veterans Administration. Folks, the Veterans Administration has over 30,000 properties that they have foreclosed on. And you do not have to be a veteran to buy those properties. Okay, so the Veterans Administration, folks, we said that we're going to go to a clip. Now, here's what you're going to see here. It's possible with the Veterans Administration to come in and get very good financing. You get 30-year fixed-rate loans that are totally assumable for the next buyer. And in addition to that, there's some interesting things that you can do with them, but it's possible to get a discount if you'll buy for cash. And the first clip you're going to see is Phil and Laverne talk about how they made $100,000 in 100 days by using the Veterans Administration. Watch closely as we go to this. We bought some government uh, houses from the government, the Veterans Administration, and... Uh, uh we uh, resold them to qualified home buyers and made a nice little profit. But how we bought it was a, a line of credit to the bank. So it was none of our money and it was none of anybody else's money. It was the bank's money. It was an open line of credit and uh, bought the properties for cash. So we got it at a sizable discount so we could resell them to make the profit. I think that's the best program around Great. because you can get a 30-year loan, fully assumable, 30-day uh, escrow, uh, basically very minimum of a cost in uh, Jack I, I think you should remember that in submitting your offer you're competing with others maybe a lot of others so try to be realistic in what you offer what is the percentage of offers and offers accepted that are less than the asking price we, we, we just started up with this program two months ago and really November is the first fair test uh, about 30 percent of all our offers that were accepted 
were less than the list price. And of course, if someone offers cash below our listed price, and if it stays within a 10% range of what we listed it for, we consider that the same as the listed price. It gets a little confusing. All right, well, it? that's an important distinction. One of your changes has been, though, that if the house was a $50,000 house, you would sell it for forty-five for cash, mm -hmm. and that's considered the same as that's a full 50. price. Uh -huh. So somebody could go out and get some financing from another source, and they've automatically got and 10 percent. we would give them off. enough time to get that financing. All right. Hey, we are interviewing three uh, representatives of the Veterans Administration, and we're talking about the repossessed loan program that they have. Your question. Yeah, I have a question. I understand there are two distinctions between the loans. One is uh, owner-occupied, and the other one is non-owner. Now, if you're an investor who is an owner, can he move in for a week or something and consider as an owner or owner-occupied loan? No, that you don't have to do that on the, on the repossessed program. No, there's, uh, occupancy isn't a, isn't a problem. It used to be, Ray, that you had a bigger down payment if you weren't going to move in. That's property. right. If but that has it been changed. That's been eliminated now. All right. Yeah. So let's review just quickly some of the things that have been eliminated. One is you'll now take less than the market. Number two is you'll take a 10% discount for cash. Number three is owner, occupant, and investor, you're going to treat the same. Is that correct? As far as the terms are concerned. Right. If it comes to a tiebreaker, when you get way down that far, sixth or seventh on the list of tiebreakers, then the owner, occupant would win out over okay. the non-owner. So if, if the two of us have the same offer, and I live in it and he's not, then I win. You're going to get the not. Okay. Uh, when you're making an offer on this thing, do you have to make an earnest money deposit? And if so, do we have to send that down to you, or does the broker keep you, that in his you office? send us... Um, the earnest money deposit when you make an offer below our listed price. But if other you, than that, you don't have other to. Other than that, you don't have to. That's interesting. So, so you, you, you don't have any of your money tied up until you find out if you're going to be the one. Right. Else. I don't know any place else I can tie up real estate without any earnest money deposit. Can you imagine that? And did you hear that one of the most important things he said? And that is, we will give you time. If you offer us all cash, we will give you time to raise the cash. Remember the first couple that made $100,000? Guess what they did? They tied up 10 of those houses. Now, the more you buy, guess what? The better the discount, all right? So they tied up 10 of them, turned around and sold those through another government loan program, through an FHA government loan program, to people at market value. And they've already got the market value. Do you think they put up any cash during that time? They just turned around, had somebody else buy it, and put $100,000 cash in their pocket in 100 days. How many of you want to do that? Would you raise your hand? All right. Now, we've got number three. Folks, for those of you who just joined us and have not heard what we're doing, we're going through government foreclosure opportunities. We've talked about IRS uh, government foreclosure opportunities and seen some of those sales. We talked about Veterans Administration and interviewed some of the people from the Veterans Administration. Right now, we're at HUD, Housing and Urban Development. Those are the FHA guaranteed loans that HUD gets back. Number four is Fannie Mae, the Federal National Mortgage Association. Number five is the SBA, the Small Business Administration. Number six is the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Now, the FDIC is the governmental agency which insures deposits in banks up to $100,000. Now, Here's the way it works. When a bank gets closed down, who winds up with all those properties? The FDIC. Who winds up with the bad loans? The FDIC. See, some people don't understand. The FDIC sometimes actually is doing the foreclosing themselves. Where do you think I'm going to be going in two weeks? I'm going to Washington, D.C. For what purpose? To actually meet with the FDIC. Now, I've met them in my local area, but what I want you to do is contact the FDIC in your region. For Hawaii, over here, it would be San Francisco. And they have properties from banks that have been foreclosed on. They'll have properties over here on the islands, and they can give you a list of the properties. For those of you viewing, the same will apply for your particular area. Now, number seven, and the one I want you to put the star next to, is tax sales. And the word to put in front of that is real estate tax sales. You've got real estate tax sales that takes place all over the United States, in all 50 states, and here's the way it works. And that is, if somebody has not been paying their real estate taxes, does that make the governments happy? No. So in all 50 states, there's a process that they go through to auction off the properties. And I want you to write down that in real estate tax sales, there are two types of sales. 
redemption states, there are states in which the properties may be redeemed. After they hold the auction, you don't get to move in. What you receive, and I want you to write this down, you receive what is called a tax certificate. Now, that is your evidence of an interest in the property. If the people do not redeem, then you will receive a deed. Now, the redemption periods run from as short as 30 days to as long as three years. So it'll vary from state to state. Now, that happens to be, folks, an excellent investment opportunity. How many of you today have any money that you have sitting in a bank or savings and loan? Would you raise your hands? Okay. A lot of you are poor, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Because the money that you have in banks and savings and loans, the safest place, in my opinion, for some of your extra money, you need some emergency money, but the safest place with the highest return is not in CDs, it's not in treasury bills, it's not in bonds, it's in tax certificates in redemption states. And let me give you a few examples of a few states that you can consider. Number one is Florida. In Florida, you earn 18% interest on your money. Number two is Texas. Texas, you earn 25% interest on your money. Their redemption period is a two-year redemption period. The way it works is that at the end, you pay the back taxes. At the end of two years, you're either going to own the house or you're going to get your money back plus 25% interest. State number three is Illinois. And in Illinois, the interest rate is 36%. Your money is going to double every two years. I want every one of you in this room to set up an IRA. It used to be people would ask in the question and answer period, should I have an IRA? And my answer is no. Take that same money and let's go out and make you a whole bunch of money buying real estate. But that's no longer true. I now believe in what I call get rich slow. And that happens to be through setting up an IRA program. Let me ask you this. How many of you today have an IRA program already set up? Would you raise your hand? Every one of you that currently has an IRA, I want you to switch it over to tax certificates in the redemption states. Now, to do that, you need what is called a trustee. You need a self-directed IRA in which you can specify. All of the money doesn't have to go in tax certificates. The money can be placed in lots of different categories. You can put it in stocks. You can put it in savings and loan and money market funds. But you get to determine where it goes and when it goes. Any of you in here, how many of you in here have 10,000 or more in a KEO pension or IRA? Would you raise your hands? Okay, a large group of you. Let's just do the numbers for a minute. Let's assume that you put your $10,000 in an IRA in Illinois tax certificates. In two years, you're going to have $20,000 because it doubles every two years. In four years, you're going to have $40,000. In six years, you're going to have $80,000. In eight years, you're going to have $160,000. You with me so far? How much are we going to have at the end of 10 years? Three twenty. dollars At the end of 12, six forty. dollars That's the beauty of compounding of interest. Now, part of you say, I don't have any cash today. What you can do is go out and find some people that have cash today, and you make this arrangement with them. They get the first 18%. You get everything over that. And any properties that they do not redeem, you will split 50-50 with them on the profits after they have all their money back plus 18% interest. That's a fabulous way to go. You know today. You've got neighbors, friends, relatives, people that can do it. One of the keys to being successful is to find a way to get your hands on some money and be able to have it earn at a higher rate. Now, let me ask you a question. Why is it no bank or savings and loan or stockbroker has ever told you to put your money in tax certificates? You want to know why? It's because they don't make a dime if you put it there. See, that may be the best place for you to put your money, but nobody's paying them anything to tell you. That's the best place to put it. That's why I am so proud of a brand new book I've written called Get Rich with Tax Sales. 
This particular book could be worth $1,000 in cash. I'd pay $1,000 in cash for the information in here because this gives us every state in the United States. This tells you exactly how you set up that IRA. And I had to spend over $5,000 because to put it together, that's why I'd spend $1,000 in cash because what we did is we contacted every single state. And guess what? These tax sales are fascinating, exciting. They're fabulous opportunities, but... I haven't even given you the best part yet. Let's talk about the best part, and that is non-redemption states. There are states in which the sales are not final. I mean, where the sales are final and where you can go in and actually be the bidders. Now, what I want to do is have us show you. I'm going to take you right now. Folks, I've spent a lot of money getting ready for this program. I was excited about it, and I now want to go to the tape and show you exactly what the tax auction sales. Now, remember, this happens to be in New Mexico where the sale is going to be final. People have two years to pay the taxes. If they don't pay it, they're going to be auctioning off the properties. And we're going to show you the first one's going to be a farm that's going to be auctioned off, and you'll see the bidding process. And then we're going to interview some people who have just bought some properties at this auction. Let's roll it right now. Now, this, you'll see, is in Taos, New Mexico. This is the county building. Now, this is what some of the land looks like. I bought properties. I bought over nine parcels of land right here. Now, you'll see this was founded in 1824. It's a beautiful colony. Three. Beautiful Shopping little. Plaza. 43. That's the auctioneer employee of the state 45. of New Mexico. 46. 47. That's my friend John 47. Beck. He's an attorney who owns over 1,000 properties 47. that was on the front row. 48 now. 49. And a 5,000. There he is. 51. 52, 53, 54, 5, 6, 7, 8, 6, 61. This is a 40-acre farm 63, with a beautiful farmhouse. 65. Give me 7,000. Give me 7,500. 8,000. 8,500. 9,000. 9,500. 9,100. 9,100. 9,200. 9,3. 93, $93, $9,200, Okay, now this is another shot of some of the land, and so that was the most expensive one. I just showed you the most expensive, and a little bit we're going to tell you how cheaply some of this. Now, what you're going to see now is some of the property that I bought at this sale. You're going to see a beautiful bridge. And I didn't buy the bridge, but I bought, uh, uh, I bought a lot of this land that you're seeing right here. And in a little bit, I'll tell you so how much I've made money buying properties at these sales. Oh, I would say so. Give us an example. Um, I would say um, you could potentially purchase like the one I purchased not too long ago, three and a half acres with a beautiful river in the mountains going right through the middle of it for $365. It was appraised at approximately $27,000, but I sold it back to the person who lost it for $10,000. Really? Yeah. Why didn't they pay the three sixty-five? dollars Because they forgot to assess the property when they originally bought it. Is that right? That's correct. And so you bought it for three sixty-five dollars and turned around and sold it to them for $10,000? That's correct. And you could have sold it for a lot more had you not sold it back to them? That's correct. Okay. And you have seen other people do similar things at tax sale grants? I've seen people pay $7,000 and acquire a piece of property that's appraised between one hundred and fifty and three hundred. $150,000. Now, does that also include improved properties? One in particular had two large three-bedroom cabins, and it was five and a half acres, and it appraised at $275,000. And they bought it for? $7,400. Isn't that amazing? $7,400, and they bought a $275,000 property. That's correct. All right. What did you just buy? I bought um, a lot in about two lots up on uh, a hill site which has pinon and juniper and cedar trees and lava rock okay now what did you pay for those lots 90 each okay 90 dollars each and what are you going to do with those rusty well it's part of our farm we've so far been able to get together 18 lots in this central area at these auctions right and uh, so it's just um, 
Yeah. Well, <clears throat> one of these lots we have pinpointed for putting a piano room, mm -hmm. and then the other lot is higher up on the hill where we'll probably build a, a meditation, like a hermitage or something. Oh, that's neat. So what you've done then is at various auctions you've come in and accumulated these properties? That's right. All right. Checkerboarding all over the place and then filling in between. That's what was happening today when I told that man that he would be buying. We have three lots surrounding that one that I was bidding on. And what was it you said to him that made him back off? You said something to him. I told him it was my lamb. <laughs> <laughs> and that made him back off. Okay. Yeah. Do you keep horses and pigs out there? We uh, we don't have pigs anymore. I just said that because we did at one point. But we have chickens and geese and goats and horses mm -hmm. and lots of cats. Do you all live off the land, Rusty? Pretty much. Yeah. We have about four acres plowed. It was all sagebrush. And uh, we bought this time. It's not sagebrush. It's, it's up higher. Mm -hmm. It's away from the farm. And you have 18 different parcels that you've been able to pick up. Right. right. And it sounds to me like you're getting good buys. These, these two will actually make it 20. 20 parts. Right. And these are quarter acre lots, so all together they'll give us five acres. It's three and a half on the farm and one and a half up on the hill, so on the trees. I, I guess what I would say, what I was thinking about is for people who want to buy land and don't have money, this is a good place to come. Auctions, I don't know if they have them in California. Yeah, they have them in every state. In every state. It's where people can pick up land and build their own home. Starting at $10, we've gotten land. Have you really? Yes, sir. Yeah, some of the land around you? All of it around us. Really? Yes. Um, uh, land we picked up for $10, it wasn't around us. We sold to others who wanted land and didn't know about the auction. Isn't that exciting? Give them a hand. I love it. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. Did you see the contrast between the kind of people that were there at the sale? All right. Now, when you go to the sale, what I want you to do is when there are people like that wanting to buy land for their own purposes, don't bid against them. All right, let them get their land. See, they're going to have 20 parcels, right? This is a dream come true for them. And did you hear what they're doing? When they buy a parcel outside of their area, what would they do with it? They'd sell it, make a profit, and that gave them enough money to turn around and buy other parcels, okay? And I got all kinds of interviews that I did out there that people so happy to have bought it. Now, I bought nine free and clear parcels at an average cost of $34. $34, folks, and I went to do a TV show, okay? I didn't even go to buy the parcels. I just happened to be standing there saying, this is exciting, all right? We can make some money off of this. How long has this been going on, all right? Now, remember I said earlier, I want every one of you to own some free and clear land within the last six months? After seeing that, all right, when you see those folks and what they're doing, picking up land and making money, you know what thought should be going through your mind? If they can do it, so can I. Cash, hundreds and thousands of dollars, can be in your hands, not years from now, but the instant you apply the people-proven methods you learn from the instant cash system developed by famed author, speaker, and financial expert, Hal Morris. In this handsomely bound album, Hal Morris reveals the proven system and success secrets of how you can make a fortune in distressed properties. In eight cassette tapes containing 12 hours of valuable instruction, Hal Morris personally tells you about VA foreclosures, how to find foreclosures, IRS tax sales, distressed property opportunities, how to get started without cash or credit, making money with foreclosures, how to write the offer, and much, much more. Included is a complete home study guide with checklists, escrow information, strategies, sample letters, contracts, and all the other vital, easy-to-use tools for making instant cash with distressed properties of all kinds. This unique wealth-building material alone is a $295 value, and well worth it. But through this exclusive TV offer, you also receive Get Rich with Tax Sale Properties, a comprehensive guide on how to buy tax sale properties in all 50 states and earn up to 36% interest on your money. And there's an eye-opening section on how you can buy tax properties for high interest on your IRA to carry your wealth right through your retirement years. 
And there's more. You'll get this hardcover edition on real estate investing, the bestseller by Hal Morris, that shows you how to use lease options and equity sharing to create instant cash. And you'll receive another hardcover book by Hal Morris, How to Stop Foreclosure, a valuable tool to generate income by helping people prevent foreclosure. But that's not all. You'll get these two money-making review tapes by Hal Morris that take you step-by-step step through the foreclosure process and property auctions. And as an extra bonus, you'll also receive this three-cassette tape album in which you'll learn through actual phone conversations how to buy real estate with nothing down by just using your telephone. If you're tired of just earning a living, if you want money to do everything you've always wanted to do, the Hal Morris Instant Cash System is the answer. If others can achieve greater financial success, so can you. Hal Morris shares his complete proven wealth-building system for only $295 during this special TV offer, and it comes with a 100% money-back guarantee. Keep it for 10 days. If you're not completely satisfied, return it for a full refund. Order now. Call this toll-free number, 1-800-334-1212. That's 1-800-334-1212. Ask for the Hal Morris Home Study Course. Use your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express. Sorry, no CODs. Call now, toll-free, 1-800-334-1212. Or send check or money order for $295 to Hal Morris, Box 26857, Phoenix, Arizona, 85068. Here's what you get. The famous Hal Morris Instant Cash System. 12 hours of expert instruction on eight tapes and a complete study guide on how you can make a fortune in distressed properties. This special reference booklet covering tax sale property rules state by state and how to combine your IRA with tax sale properties for higher interest. You'll get the hardcover book by Hal Morris on real estate investing that shows you how to make instant cash with lease options and equity sharing. And you'll receive the How to Stop Foreclosure book that tells you how to create income by helping people prevent foreclosure. Plus, two review tapes that take you step-by-step step through property auctions and the foreclosure process. And as an extra bonus, you get this three-cassette album on how to buy real estate with nothing down over the phone. The famous Hal Morris Instant Cash System can change your life. This complete system is yours for only $295 and comes with a money-back guarantee. Don't wait. Order now. Dial toll-free 1-800-334-1212. That's 1-800-334-1212. Use your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express. Sorry, no CODs. Call now, toll-free 1-800-334-1212. Or send check or money order to Hal Morris, Box 26857, Phoenix, Arizona, 85068. Folks, what I want to do is go through some steps for you on how to buy these tax sale properties. Every one of you can go out and take advantage of the fabulous bargains in these real estate tax sale properties. And so we have some steps for you to follow. The first one is I want you to obtain a list of the tax sale properties from the taxing authority in your area. Now, I can't tell you the specific taxing authority for all across the country because it varies. For example, in the state of Oregon, you're going to contact the county sheriff's office. In Nevada, the county treasurer's office. I've got a book here that tells you for each and every state who you need to contact. In Maine, it's the Bureau of Taxation, Property Tax Division. So that's why I want everybody to get hold of this particular book, and it'll tell you exactly all the rules and things to watch out for. But the step one is you're going to obtain a list of the tax sale properties from the taxing authority for your particular state. Number two, analyze the tax sale properties for your state. You need to know which properties you have an interest in. They'll give you a printout as far as the properties. Let me give you folks an example of what the printouts look like. I'll give you a specific example under number two of how you analyze it. Here you'll see in the city of Palm Springs, like in California, it's the county tax collector. And you'll see at the top, it says in the city of Palm Springs, and then it'll give the name of the last assessed owner. It'll then give you a price, the minimum bid as far as the property is concerned. For example, this particular property says Robert Allen and the minimum price, $275. And so it, it's not the Robert Allen many of you think it is who wrote nothing down, by the way. But uh, what you'll have is you'll notice that the first few properties, there is no address listed. But then the next property, there is an address 15160 Broadway, Cabazon, and then the minimum price, instead of being 275 like on these others, it shows the minimum price is $3,375.
Now, what do we know right away about this property since it has a much higher price and it also has a, a street address? It's probably a house. We know that it's an improved property of some type because they have a specific address. So on this particular sheet, now for this particular printout, there were over 400 properties that were listed. But folks, I don't care what type of property you're looking for. If you're interested in apartment house or condominium, if you're interested in vacant land, if you're interested in farmland, whatever type of property, they show up on these particular sheets. Let me give you an example right here of another category. Here is in the city of Palm Springs, 1450 North Indian Avenue in Palm Springs. Can you see what the opening bid says? $336,162. Now, does that make any sense to you? How in the world could a property that big? Now, this is the major area of Palm Springs. Right away, we know a couple of things. We know this is a major property. It's probably a shopping center, a hotel, an office building, uh, apartment house, something of a major nature. Now, it turns out that this is a hotel. And for some reason, they haven't paid their taxes. Now, California is a non-redemption state, meaning when this auction is held and the gavel comes down, that's it. Finished, through, they have no right of redemption. They've lost all their interest. Now, let me ask you a question. Why in the world would sophisticated investors not have paid their taxes? Guess what the answer to that is? Who knows? You, know, you got no way of knowing. It just happens, folks. And it happens in every city, in every county, all over the United States. Let me tell you about a personal story. I have in my foreclosure album, my home study package, my home study course, my foreclosure tapes, I have cards and letters that you send out to people who have not been paying their taxes. You see the address and you see the name, you send out a card and letter as soon as you get it. One night I come home and my beautiful wife, by the way, she's sitting in the back of the room and this weekend we are celebrating our 22nd anniversary right here in Hawaii <laughs> County. There she is right there in the back. I, I can't believe one woman who put up with me for 22 years, I'll tell you. Uh, so here's what happened and that is that I come home one night and I get a card in the mail saying, your property is going to be auctioned off for back taxes. And then it proceeds to say word for word what my card says to say. And one of my students was sending me one of my cards from my album. <laughs> and I thought to myself, isn't this a funny practical joke? Somebody's made, now folks, this is a million dollar property. Pasadena, City of Pasadena, Colorado Boulevard, the Rose Parade goes by every uh, New Year's Day. This is a beautiful property with a lot of equity. And they're telling me it's going to be auctioned off for back taxes. I call up and say, hey, that's a cute joke you're playing. And they said, is this the Hal Morris who has, I got your foreclosure tapes? I, I can't believe one woman who put up with me for 22 years, I'll tell you. Uh, so here's what happened, and that is that I come home one night and I get a card in the mail saying, your property is going to be auctioned off for back taxes. And then it proceeds to say word for word what my card says to say. And one of my students was sending me one of my cards from my album. <laughs> and I thought to myself, isn't this a funny practical joke? Somebody's made, now folks, this is a million dollar property. Pasadena, City of Pasadena, Colorado Boulevard, the Rose Parade goes by every uh, New Year's Day. This is a beautiful property with a lot of equity. And they're telling me it's going to be auctioned off for back taxes. I call up and say, hey, that's a cute joke you're playing. And they said, is this the Hal Morris who has, I got your foreclosure tapes? I said, yeah. They said, man, this is no joke. I said, what do you mean this is no joke? They said, your property's about to be auctioned off. Now, I couldn't believe that. Now, let me tell you, have you ever heard of a lease in which somebody leases a property and it's called a triple net lease where the person you've leased it to pays the taxes, the insurance, the maintenance, and handles all costs and then just sends you a nice check for the difference? That's the kind of lease I had. And after a few years of their having paid the taxes, they said, why don't you send the tax bill to us? Let them have our address for the tax bill since we're paying it anyway. So the tax collector will send the bill to us and we'll pay it and you don't have to fool with getting it to us every time. I said, okay. I did that for them. 
So now when they quit paying the taxes and they got ready to auction it off, who got notified? They did. I wasn't getting notified. Now, if they hold the auction on this property and the fellow who had been leasing it from me bids at the auction and winds up owning it, who wins? He does. That's exactly. You can see where there'd be some benefit for him not doing it. And had it not been for one of my students sending me one of my cards, I'd have wound up having a major property auctioned off at the sale. That's why I tell you, you never know exactly why it happens. Now, some of you don't have $336,000 to go out and start. You're not going to be able to get your very first property at an auction at that level, but any of you like to own some property in Palm Springs, look at this. Opening bid, $25. All right. $25. And folks, there are things you can do. In a little bit, I'm going to teach you the seven things you can do once you own some free and clear land. Now, what I did is I said you analyze the list. Then I want you to send a card or letter in the mail before the auction takes place. Before the auction takes place, send a card or letter in the mail letting the people know that you're interested in their particular property. Then we come to step number four, and that is those people who you can't get an address, try to get a telephone. Some people have just disappeared. And we have a total system to use for abandoned property. I don't think I'm going to have time to teach you on that today, but there are people who have left the properties and they're not paying their taxes, and it's, there's some fabulous things you can do using a totally different government program where without any down payment, you can come in and rent out properties you don't even own. Now, you telephone those prop people whose properties you're the most interested in, because we want to try and make a transaction before the auction takes place. Step number five is drop by and visit those who you cannot contact by phone. There are going to be some properties that will have street addresses that you're really interested in. You drop by, and they have a number of steps that I want you to follow that we teach you in the home training course, how to dress, what to say when you go up to the door, uh, steps that you follow to go through the specific approach. Then, number six, I want you to get as many contracts signed as possible before the auction. We've got a specific contract that you use, and you get as many of these contracts signed because, folks, you don't have to come up with the money for the back taxes. It's possible to sell that contract. Now, on some of these, you're going to find you can't make a deal before the auction, so then I want you to show up at the auction. You actually attend the auction. If you don't have money, get somebody to put up some cash for you and split the profit with them 50-50. You show up at the auction, focus on the low-priced properties, all right? Get as many of the low-priced properties as you can, and then we want to show you seven steps to take. How many of you would like to own a, free and, a number of free and clear properties real fast? Would you raise your hand? Okay, you can go out and do it. Now, once you've done it, let me have you write down seven uses for these lots. Once you own those free and clear lots, the first thing I want you to do is use them on your financial statement. Are bankers impressed if you own free and clear real estate? Sure. See, some of you are just getting started. And I know what it's like to be broke, and I know what it's like to be poor, and we have got a number of systems you can go out and get started. The first thing you need to do is learn how to borrow money. You need to go out and figure out ways to get your hands on some cash. Bankers don't like people that are always leveraged. So take two or three of these lots, set them aside. You're going to do nothing but have these properties free and clear. The second thing you do is use them as a vacation package. Here we are over in Hawaii, and many people would like to come over here to Hawaii. If they have as a primary reason for coming here to Hawaii, checking up on their lots, what happens to the cost of their trip? tax deductible. So for those of you that like to go to Vegas, I know many of you over here like to fly to Las Vegas. There are lots of lots in Nevada that you can buy some lots, have as your primary purpose, checking up on your lots. Number three is you can use it as the down payment on other real estate. Number four is you can trade these lots for personal property. A little later, you're going to see a lady who actually wound up with a $5,000 car. Maybe it's $4,500 car for buying some of these lots very, very cheap. Number five, put a star next to number five because that's the finest tax shelter in the United States. You remember those $34 lots? We showed you some of the land that we bought back there. Guess what those lots were appraised for? $5,000. Now, if you hold those until they're long-term, 
you can then turn around and donate those lots to your favorite church or charity. Now, do you write off the $34 or do you write off the $5,000? $5,000. That means, folks, you can get a $5,000 tax write-off, and if you're in a 30% tax bracket, that means next April 15th, that's $1,500 you now do not have to send the government. $1,500. So there are ways you can help the church and charity. At the same time, you can help yourself. I know one church that's had so many of these lots donated to them that every year they hold their own auction now. And these lots are never going to get built on. They just keep recycling the lots right there within the same church. Number seven, number seven is you can use these as gifts. You can give them away to people that are helping you. And I didn't even give you number eight. I just assumed everybody knew what number eight is. What's number eight? You can sell them. That's right. You, you can turn around and sell these lots and put some cash in your pocket from getting involved in the purchase of the low-priced free and clear lots. Now, I do have to caution you that in 90% of the states, when you go in to bid, guess what happens to any loans that are on the properties when you go to the auction? They get wiped out. That's why we're talking free and clear land. In 10% of the states, they do have the loans stay on the property, so it's important that you do your homework before you just go out and automatically start bidding all across the board. I want to show you one of the clips. We're going to start giving you some clips of some of the people that have been successful. And this is a college student who has no cash, no credit, at the time had no job, just uh, $235, $238 cash in the bank. And people say you can't do it without cash and you can't do it without credit. And at various conventions, uh, that I have been to, we've had people come up on stage and share what they have been able to do. And so I want you to listen carefully because you're going to hear that there are certain things that you've got to apply. Listen closely to the very next tape as we roll this tape for you. And when I heard that you could uh, buy real estate with no money, no job, and no credit, that kind of appealed to me because I was in college and I didn't have any of those things. So I did have a dirt bike that I had sold to raise the money to go to the seminar. And since the seminar, I, I've, you know, been in and out of several properties. I control several right now, but the best deal I have that I want to share with everyone, I'm very proud of, I bought a foreclosure property for about $25,000 in Sacramento, put a little fix-up time into it, and after it closes next week, I should net about $25,500. Let me understand. You'll make a profit in your pocket of $25,500 after every expense that I can imagine. If you had it to do over again, would you sell the dirt bike and do it again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy about 10 dirt bikes now. Oh, all right. <laughs> OK. Your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Celeste Majors, and I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. And um, I bought a property at a foreclosure auction. And um, I bought it for $79,000. And the day after I bought it, I went to my bank and asked them to put a new first on it. And they uh, appraised it for 108000 So they gave me an $86,000 loan, an 80% loan. OK, let me understand this. You put more money in your pocket than you paid for the property. Right. It paid all my closing costs, and I walked away with a couple thousand dollars. And um, my, my banker wanted to know if I wanted a loan against my own home for the fix-up cost, which of course I took. And I didn't have a job at this time, by the way. <laughs> and uh, so I fixed up the house and sold it uh, about nine months later for 135000 That is out of sight. Give her a hand. Let her know you appreciate it. Celeste, that's great. Thank you so much. We looked at the car, test drove it. At 2 a.m., we took home a $5,000 Chevy Love truck for four pieces of property that was distressed for which we paid half of $450. And that was just great. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed doing it. At the beginning of the program, I told you we had two goals for you. Goal number one was that you would have some cash in your pocket in the next 90 days. Goal number two was that you would own some free and clear land in the next six months. If you saw the look in the eyes of some of the people that I interviewed during this show, you know that it can happen for you, too. And I'm excited about your third goal. The third goal is 
that I want you to be financially independent within the next three to five years. It can happen for you. The key is to remember those 10 magic words. If it is to be, it is up to me. Cash, hundreds and thousands of dollars can be in your hands, not years from now, but the instant you apply the people-proven methods you learn from the instant cash system developed by famed author, speaker, and financial expert, Hal Morris. In this handsomely bound album, Hal Morris reveals the proven system and success secrets of how you can make a fortune in distressed properties. In eight cassette tapes containing 12 hours of valuable instruction, Hal Morris personally tells you about VA foreclosures, how to find foreclosures, IRS tax sales, distressed property opportunities, how to get started without cash or credit, making money with foreclosures, how to write the offer, and much, much more. Included is a complete home study guide with checklists, escrow information, strategies, sample letters, contracts, and all the other vital, easy-to-use tools for making instant cash with distressed properties of all kinds. This unique wealth-building material alone is a $295 value, and well worth it. But through this exclusive TV offer, you also receive Get Rich with Tax Sale Properties, a comprehensive guide on how to buy tax sale properties in all 50 states and earn up to 36% interest on your money. And there's an eye-opening section on how you can buy tax properties for high interest on your IRA to carry your wealth right through your retirement years. And there's more. You'll get this hardcover edition on real estate investing, the bestseller by Hal Morris, that shows you how to use lease options and equity sharing to create instant cash. And you'll receive another hardcover book by Hal Morris, How to Stop Foreclosure, a valuable tool to generate income by helping people prevent foreclosure. But that's not all. You'll get these two money-making review tapes by Hal Morris that take you step-by-step step through the foreclosure process and property auctions. And as an extra bonus, you'll also receive this three-cassette tape album in which you'll learn through actual phone conversations how to buy real estate with nothing down by just using your telephone. If you're tired of just earning a living, if you want money to do everything you've always wanted to do, the Hal Morris Instant Cash System is the answer. If others can achieve greater financial success, so can you. Hal Morris shares his complete proven wealth-building system for only $295 during this special TV offer, and it comes with a 100% money-back guarantee. Keep it for 10 days. If you're not completely satisfied, return it for a full refund. Order now. Call this toll-free number, 1-800-334-1212. That's 1-800-334-1212. Ask for the Hal Morris Home Study Course. Use your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express. Sorry, no CODs. Call now, toll-free, 1-800-334-1212. Or send check or money order for $295 to Hal Morris, Box 26857, Phoenix, Arizona, 85068. Here's what you get. The famous Hal Morris Instant Cash System. 12 hours of expert instruction on eight tapes and a complete study guide on how you can make a fortune in distressed properties. This special reference booklet covering tax sale property rules state by state and how to combine your IRA with tax sale properties for higher interest. You'll get the hardcover book by Hal Morris on real estate investing that shows you how to make instant cash with lease options and equity sharing. And you'll receive the How to Stop Foreclosure book that tells you how to create income by helping people prevent foreclosure plus two review tapes that take you step-by-step step through property auctions and the foreclosure process. And as an extra bonus, you get this three cassette album on how to buy real estate with nothing down over the phone. The famous Hal Morris Instant Cash System can change your life. This complete system is yours for only $295 and comes with a money-back guarantee. Don't wait. Order now. Dial toll-free 1-800-334-1212. That's 1-800-334-1212. Use your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express. Sorry, no CODs. Call now, toll-free 1-800-334-1212. Or send check or money order to Hal Morris, Box 26857, Phoenix, Arizona, 85068.